This PowerPoint covers seizures. You'll notice that you have two PowerPoints about seizures. This one has the voiceover, and the other one is not a voiceover PowerPoint, but has videos detailing the presentation of various kinds of seizures. So please listen to this first, and then go check out the other one. So exactly what is a seizure? A seizure can be defined as a finite event. It begins and ends at a specific time, and it's a result of excess discharge of cerebral neurons resulting in an impairment of some sort, and the kind of seizure will dictate what kind of impairment will be evident or a loss of consciousness. It can be caused by many different things, and later on in this presentation we'll talk about some things that are known to cause seizures and no single brain lesion causes them, meaning that patients that have any kind of lesion in the brain could present with a seizure, as well as some seizures are inherited. Epilepsy is the term for a chronic disorder characterized by recurrent seizures. Epilepsy can have an inherited pattern to it, and it could also be caused by trauma. Usually patients are diagnosed with epilepsy when they suffer from more than one non-febrile seizure. Uh, non-febrile is having a seizure in the absence of a fever. 75% have onset before the age of 20, and anxiety can be a significant problem in this patient population since they never know when they're going to seize. Since they have recurrent seizures, they might have activity participation limitations. Uh, they might not be able to drive, play sports, um, and if they do seize, they have potential for falls, burns, breaks, other injuries. And overall, the seizures can be managed in most of the patients with specific medications. The next few slides will talk about different kinds of seizures. And as I mentioned, each of these kinds of seizures is detailed in video form in the corresponding PowerPoint online. The first kind that we're going to talk about are known as partial seizures. These are the most frequent and severe form of epilepsy in adults. They have an EEG evidence of a local onset, and the syndrome is characterized by the locus of onset. So, for example, if they see EEG abnormalities in the temporal region, it's a temporal partial seizure, and frontal, parietal, occipital, etc. There are two kinds of partial seizures. The first is a simple partial, and the second is a complex partial. The other kind of seizures are known as generalized seizures. In a generalized seizure, a localized onset is not evident. The brain doesn't show EEG abnormalities in just one region. It, the changes are diffuse all throughout the brain. There are six types of generalized seizures. The generalized absent seizures, also known as petite mal seizures, the atypical absent seizures, myoclonic seizures, atonic seizures, tonic clonic seizures, which is also known as the grand mal seizure, as well as something known as static status epilepticus, which is considered an emergency, and we'll talk about that kind at the end of this talk. And remember, the other PowerPoint has videos of all of these types of seizures that you can watch and get a feel for what you're visualizing when you see it in a patient. For the generalized seizures, the uh, tonic-clonic seizure, or the grand mal seizure, is what we, we consider a seizure. If you, if you ever see a, a patient with a grand mal seizure, you will definitely know that they are seizing. Um, during the seizure, they have altered speech. They might have paralysis or ataxia. They might complain of a headache, be disoriented, and uh, might be their muscles after they're done seizing might be sore. Uh, patients may or may not be able to predict that they're going to have a seizure. Sometimes they have a, a certain tingling that starts, or they, they have an aura. Um, or, or just no. And, and if I have a patient in the, the clinic that has a history of seizures, I always ask if they know that it's coming on. 
and if they feel a seizure coming on, I'd like them to tell me that it's going to happen soon so that we can sit down or make sure that we're in a safe place and, and not ascending, descending stairs in a, in a large sta stairwell, for example. So important thing to remember if a person has seizure precautions, ask them if they can predict when it's coming and also how often does it come. As far as grand mal seizures, they may be recurring before or after consciousness is returned, and we'll talk about static epilepticus here in a minute, and also realize that these grand mal seizures are much less common than the partial seizures that you saw in the accompanying video. And static epilepticus is a kind of generalized seizure that are prolonged or repeated so that recovery doesn't occur between the individual seizures. And the kind of seizure that usually produces static, static epilepticus is the tonic-clonic or grand mal seizure. Realize that this is a medical emergency. It can have an, an adults that have, have a tumor. They could have CNS infection or drug abuse. And children under three years Febrile seizures or having a fever and seizing are common causes. This slide details some causes of symptomatic seizure activity. Uh, if you want to take a minute to read these with me, they could have a patient that has changes in hormone levels. They may have had head trauma, an intracranial mass or a tumor. They can have an infection, stroke, uh, exposed to toxic substances and or poison. They could be hypoxic or uh, it, to be hypoxic they're just deprived of oxygen for whatever reason or they could have had a heart attack causing uh, hypoxia. They may have a congenital brain disorder. They could have uh, dementia for example. They could have pneumonia in the elderly patient population particularly or the seizures could be idiopathic meaning nobody knows what causes them. So if you have a patient that has a past medical history of seizure events, uh, you might want to know what things could possibly trigger a seizure so that you avoid them when working with the patient. And you could also educate the patient to avoid these things during the day so that they might decrease the frequency of their seizures. Overall stress, poor nutrition, if they miss their medication. Uh, in a couple of slides, we'll talk about medications that are used to treat epilepsy or seizures and if a patient misses their medication, uh, they, they might be more prone to a seizure. Skipping meals, overall just stress on the body. Flickering lights, uh, sometimes patients experience a seizure even just, just playing video games because the, the lights are flickering on the screen in front of them. Might be due to an illness, fever and allergies, lack of sleep, again, all under stress. Excessive emotions, heat and humidity. This slide lists some anticonvulsant medications that, that it might be helpful to be familiar with. Ordinarily, uh, the big one that I see a lot in the clinic is Keppra. Uh, if the patient is on Keppra, then I know they, they probably should be on seizure precautions. The others are used to treat seizures as well as other things. So if you see these other medications in the, the patient's medication list, then it might be helpful to ask if that patient experiences seizures. If they do, then you know, the patient should be on seizure precautions so that everyone is aware of it. Um, if they don't, the medication might be used to treat something else. Like, for example, Neurotin oftentimes is used to treat nerve pain. Uh, nothing to worry about as far as seizure activity is concerned there. So what do you do if your patient has a seizure? Say you're working in the clinic and you're walking around with them. They have no idea that it's coming and they, they suddenly... Uh, have a grand mal seizure. It is your job to just slow the fall. I don't, sometimes you can't prevent the fall. The person's going to go stiff and, and they're going to hit the ground, but it's your job to make sure that they hit the ground softly. Having said that, uh, typically if a patient experiences seizures and they have no warning of, of such seizures coming, uh, the best score that I'm going to make that person have for a goal for ambulation or any time that they're up on their feet is going to be meniscus. I always want to have my hands on that person just in case. 
if a person has a seizure while you're actively doing something, you want to protect them from the environment as best you can, uh, keep them away from uh, the edges of mat tables and wheelchairs and those sorts of things, uh, especially if they're seizing, just kind of clear the area. And if you roll the patient onto their side, you can help keep their airway clear. Also important to uh, document what you see, how long the seizure lasts, and any kind of eye deviations, mouth, froth, mouth frothing, um, incontinence. It's very common for patients after a seizure or during a seizure to be incontinent, especially the, the grand mal seizures when they just, just completely go rigid. So all this information is going to be important for adjusting the medications. And realize that there are some patients who, uh, no matter what, they, they aren't going to recover from their seizure just through medications. They're going to have chronic seizures for the rest of their life, even though they are medicated properly. I've had patients in the past who were um, decreased mental status, I suppose, and that the, if they have some sort of brain abnormality that causes it, no matter what kind of medication they're on, they're going to seize. In this case, they have a, um, a special device that can be triggered with a magnet, and it's a, a vagal nerve, it's called a vagal nerve stimulator, and the, the magnet just passes over the vagal nerve stimulator, which is usually implanted somewhere in their chest, and that helps them recover from the seizure. Other PT implications to be aware of, uh, if a patient has past medical history of seizures, education is huge. You want to educate the patient on the events or the causes of seizures, typically. You want to encourage that patient to keep on a regular medication schedule. If they keep on a regular schedule, then chances are good they won't have a seizure. And if they are on a regular medication schedule and they still continue to have seizures, encourage them to see their doctor again to see if the medication can be changed to prevent the seizures. You want to build the patient's confidence with mobility. I and mean, then it's, it's no wonder the patients are very anxious. If we, if when you seize and you fall, uh, you can't do anything about it. But it's our job to encourage the patient that it's going to be okay as long as they follow specific instructions and have somebody to help them when they need help. You might be needed to evaluate the home environment or the school or work environment to make specific recommendations about how to make the environment safe, safer. As far as leisure recommendations, you might want to encourage the person to go swimming, for example, only with direct supervision. You always, since stress is known to trigger seizure activity, you want to closely monitor the patients during all of their physical activity performances. And if a patient seizes, you want to closely monitor them for at least 20 minutes after a seizure to make sure that they don't return to the status epilepticus state or proceed into the status epilepticus state. And it's also important to educate their, your patient that once they have a medication regimen in place that is going to limit their seizure activity, then all their limitations and precautions might change as time goes on.